years living in Thailand, I'm finally making it to Thailand's third largest island, Ko Chang. Named as such because people think it's shaped like an elephant, but actually, to those in the know, it is an elephant. Some super gigantic alien elephant descended onto this planet and made its home in the Gulf of Thailand. It's always sleeping, so you think it's an island. We're going to find out what really makes that island tick on this four-night family vacation. Hours and hours on this boat, we finally arrive in Ko Chang. Untouched, unheard. A sign modeled after the landmark Hollywood sign in the Santa Monica Mountains, California, but a tenth as large, welcomes us to the island. The first view of Ko Chang is a monopoly on the tank. Racket. You get off the ferry, you funnel directly to the taxi where they charge exorbitant fares to drop you off at the hotel of your choice. You might want to call this place the capital. This is where the center of trade, commerce, entertainment, and industry all converges in one place. Ko Chang has a vibrant trading port, mostly in the bodies of tourists. Silk, spices, and camels are much rarer. The Cochang coastline is ripe for vicious exploitation. Visiting Cochang is like a trip into the past, like Thailand was in the 80s and 90s. And Thailand is always thinking ahead. Outside you can see little islands, little future Cochangs, that Thailand is breeding as test islands for future tourist development. Islands have come a long way since Gilligan's time when he and the other six castaways were trapped on that island. Today's islands offer so many creature comforts you almost want to get abandoned on a desert island. Check this out. Leave me here for weeks. I don't know on Ko Chang is the chicken. The chicken is specially made, specially groomed here. Something called God Moon. And the chicken spun around on a spit for 45 minutes in a special Ko Chang blend of spices and herbs. That's what we're having for lunch. Ko Chang even has its own unique cuisine. We ordered garlic bread expecting the Italian variety. What we got was literally garlic on bread. Actually, it's unexpectedly delicious. A happy accident. Part of the mystique of visiting tropical islands is the ability to buy fresh fruits right off the vine. That's what I did. Look at this untouched beach line too. I can come here and scout out future real estate possibilities. That's where I'm going to build my mansions. I'll probably buy that whole coast line eventually and just turn it into one big strip. I like privacy when I'm staying at beach resorts on Cochin. So I got that whole corner balcony room to myself. Well, I'm sharing it with the wife, steps on but to ourselves, okay? And if we had a cat, we'd bring the cat up there too. What's better than a tropical island but a tropical island with the ocean and a river combined? I engineered it out. If I go in that direction, I get to go take a tour and see the fireflies by night. Untouched waters, nobody in sight. If I want the crowds, the sleazy backpackers, I want to do a cheap, kind of pick up that I'll cover up, I go this way, where the beach time bars are, the cheap beers, the beach resorts, the cheap beers. By the time you're visiting a tropical island, you have to visit the obligatory tropical swimming pool. That's where I am now. You have palm trees in the background, you have lush vegetation, you have a full bar, etc., etc., etc. And without that, you're not really in a tropical island. I come to Cochane because I want to get away from it all. So I do is I pretty much rent my own beach. This is it. I let a few people come here too, but most of the time I'm here on my own and I've got all the attractions I want at my disposal. I have kayaking back there, as many kayaks as I could desire. Right here, long walks on the beach, solo, with possible pickups, or the wife, she's around, and a volleyball net. Cochang is full of scenic waterways like this one, where you don't even have to pay anything to just immerse yourself with a swimsuit on, or if you want to go on that around skinny dip, that is equally accessible. Right now we're going to enjoy ourselves a Kak Loi waterfall. The waterfall has got 20 k's down. The best way to get around Cochang is by boat. I don't have a boat. Next best way, motorbike. You can get to all those little out of the way places, Waterfalls, rivers, pick up joints that you can't get to any other way. So, this is my trusted vehicle for getting me around paradise. 
when you're on Koh Chang, you gotta do kayak trip. We're on an island. There's beaches to be seen, there's communities to be explored, indigenous communities. No kayak. The best way of getting around native experience the locals on the ground floor. So that's what I'm doing. They're my triac. I'm going with two buddies around the island. I don't know how long it's going to take. The circumference of the island is 200 kilometers. I haven't actually figured out how fast I can kayak, but I think I can do it in a week. Oh, Jesus Christ. I think I've been kayaking for 150 kilometers. I don't know. You lose track of time when you've been on this river for days like I have. My muscles feel like jello, and I, oh, I could pass out any second now. But I gotta get around the island. The goal is a goal. I'm trying to experience the island at its most natural. Experience it. No trip to Ko Chang is considered fleet until you've gone an island for The usual routine if you visit one island, you have to then visit all the other surrounding smaller islands that have to develop yet, which will later be cultivated and turn into tourist traffic. And then from those smaller islands, there'll be other even smaller island floors up there. We're on the second of our four islands on this four island tour off Coach Chain. I'm not even sure what this island is called, but I do know that it wasn't discovered. Put on the map until around 2008, so there is no electricity on this island, no cell phone signal, and I'm not even sure if they've built a bathroom there yet. I'm gonna go on that island out and explore. Tropical islands aren't always sunny. We keep rains bad because it hinders our travel, but rain is good. The lush tropical vegetation can only grow when there's ample rain. And with the lush vegetation, which grows lush fruits, it brings the tourists. Because if there were no fruits here, tourists couldn't eat. It's a good thing after all. 